Hello, folks. This is Eric Sullivan. We are going to be talking today in this video about the Google Colab environment and how to organize your writing, your programming, and your math all in one of these Google Colab documents. So let's get into it. I have a Colab document open here. And now from this video forward, every video that you see about writing, programming, and um, working with Google Colab, you need to do along with me. So there's gonna be several times in this video where I just say stop and do this yourself. I literally mean stop and do that yourself. It'll literally put me on pause. There's a pause button on the video. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how you organize a Colab document, how you write some math, and I'm gonna give you some real basics here even though there's a lot more that we could do how to organize the code within your document so it's also readable, and then some tips on how to write clear math. So here we go. First things first, in the Colab document, if I come up here and click Table of Contents, I see that there's a table of contents that was already built for this. Well, okay, how did that get there? If I click into this first heading, I've got a hashtag here. That is a heading. Right, this is level one heading. If I click into here, there's two hashtags. It's a level two heading. Notice that this font is a little bit smaller than that one. If I build some more text here, I can do a level three heading. And now if I look at my table of contents, it's actually hiding under there. So you can embed this as a collection of headers where really if you're solving a problem, I might say as a level one or as a level two heading, I'm gonna call this problem one. And then underneath that, excuse typos as I type on the fly here. So I've got problem one, the problem statement. This is the statement of the problem. And then I'm going to write all of the math that needs to happen for the statement of the problem. OK, and then maybe I'm going to write some code. So as a comment, all right, so now I've got a little bit of code embedded in here. OK, there it is. And if I look at my table of contents, I can see, all right, the main topic here is writing and organizing math, blah, blah, blah. The next main topic is the table of contents that I've built by hand, uh, which I really didn't need to do since that is actually over here. The problem one in my table of contents, I can click and jump to it. Then I can jump to the problem statement and it's got the code hiding underneath. So you should use these section headers to organize your document, the problem, the problem statement, and maybe after that, I would have something like the written solution Now, if I come down to the next one, I can start problem two. Okay, so if I look at my headers here, oh, problem two is hiding in the wrong spot. Let's try that again. Problem two, and then I'm gonna put some text underneath it. There we go. Okay, so notice in my table of contents, I've got problem one, all the stuff underneath it. Problem two, all the stuff underneath it. I can hide my table of contents if I want. And moreover, I can even come in here and say, let's collapse problem one, let's collapse problem two, Let's collapse the tips for clear math. Well, okay, I, I did that one in one whole block, so it didn't collapse very well. But, and I can even collapse the whole darn thing if I wanted to. Okay, so that's really the organization that I want you to keep in mind. Now let's actually write some math. Okay, so problem one statement. Let's say, Okay, let's say we want to define this function f of x equals x times 1 minus x. If I just write that in text, this looks like text. 
But when you read a mathematics textbook, you actually should notice that all the math is set off with a different font and a different style. Since the 1970s, I want to say, the LaTeX typesetting style, which I'm about to show you, has become the standard for writing all of your math. So what you do, the simplest possible thing to do, is that every single thing that's math, you can wrap in dollar signs. Now I did shift enter to show it. Notice that it offset this in a different font. It's not just italics. I've got these nice little curls. It actually looks like the math rendered in textbook. Now I'm going to put a period after that because that's the end of the sentence. Of course, you would put a period at the end of the sentence. And say we want to, well, let's write this a little bit more explicitly. We want to evaluate the function f of x, notice I wrap that in dollar signs because that's math, at the point x equals 3. Notice I said x equals 3 wrapped in dollar signs because that's math. Okay, so now I'm going to go into this code. Now I'm going to get more into what all of the things are here. So say I want to say f is, I want to define f as a function of x, and I'm going to return x times 1 minus x. Okay, so I now have the function. I'm going to write a comment to myself. And then I'm going to print off f at 3. I'm going to do 3.0 just to be very clear. And there's my function at 3. Now, you need to pause and go do this in your own CoLab document. Set up some headers write down a short little statement of this problem, and actually build it. Put me on pause. Could go ahead and do it now. OK, you're off pause. You've actually done this yourself. That's a good thing. If you haven't, rethink your choices. The best way to learn how to program is to actually put fingers to keyboard and do it yourself. Let's write a little bit more math. Uh, I'll just I'll do this down here in problem two. So let's expand problem two out. OK, so this will be some fractions, some trig, and other fun math. This is not meant to be in any way, shape, or form in all encompassing how do you write math with the LaTeX typeset. There's lots to do there. I'm going to give you the real basics here. So say we want a fraction, like 3 fourths. OK, first, I'm going to start dollar signs, because that's going to start math. Now, what some people do is do both dollar signs and then use the back arrow to go back in between. That way, you don't lose the ending dollar sign. To do a fraction, I'm going to do backslash frac. The numerator comes in curly brackets. The denominator comes in curly brackets. And now I've got the fraction 3 fourths. Now, notice that that fell in line right in the midst of all of my text. If I want the fraction in the middle of its own row, I do double dollar sign. So I'm going to do double dollar sign, frac, three fourths. And now when I run it, look at what I get. So I'll come back into it here. You can see what it's going to render into there. All right? Backslash starts some, uh, some special math. Frac is for fraction, numerator, denominator. All right, so let's say we wanted a trig function. I want the function f of x to be, I want it to be sine x plus cosine of x. So I could do that just wrapped in dollar signs, but notice that it's got sine and cosine in italics, uh, which is actually not what you would see when you read math. But sine is a special function. All right, so if I put a backslash in front of it, I see sine now looks a little bit more like what we would expect to read. Cosine, same thing. And say I wanted a logarithm on that too, so let's do backslash ln of x. OK, so now I've got some special functions in there. And then was there anything else I had at the very top here? So let's see, trig, log, et cetera, fractions. Oh, exponents and subscripts. 
Okay, so let's define a new function. I'm going to put this on its inline. All right, so g of x. Now remember, I did double dollar sign because this is about to be the center of a new line, not in the midst of all. Oops, I should have a period there. That's the end of a sentence. G of x is, I'm going to say it's x squared, so x to the second. And notice that if I'm in math mode, it actually throws the exponent up there. Plus, uh, we'll say 3x minus constant number 1. So c sub 1. Now, the subscript is an underscore. And I've got my x squared plus 3x minus c1, whatever the heck c1 is. But this gives you a sense of what the mathematical typesetting is. Notice, if I take the dollar signs off, it thinks that is just regular old raw text, and your eye is not drawn to that as mathematics. So if I want inline, or I'm sorry, if I want it in the center of a row, in the, um, as its own little equation, which, by the way, is still a part of the sentence, so it needs a period, I'm going to do double dollar signs. If I just want it as part of the sentence structure, I'm going to just do single dollar signs. Now, there's a lot more that I could say about this. I'm going to let you play around. So pause, play a little bit, do some fractions, do some trade, just write a couple of sentences of mathematics. No, seriously, put me on pause and do it. Okay, now that you're off pause, I'm just going to give you a quick highlight, like a top 10 list of things that you should do when you're writing mathematics. The A number one thing you should do is read your math out loud. And if it doesn't make sense as an English sentence, you need to rewrite it. Absolutely. The math is part of the English sentence structure. Every mathematical statement needs to be complete and meaningful, so avoid little fragmented sentences. Anything you write down needs to be true. It's often helpful to write what your plan is. So you can say something like, in the next step, let me do that here. So e.g., in the next step, we are going to simplify the equation, you know, whatever. OK, so things like that just to help the reader kind of get engaged with what it is you're doing. All right, there must be sufficient detail to verify your argument. If you don't have the sufficient detail, that's when you grab your pencil and your paper and you actually go build that sufficient detail on your own. If you're not sure about something, work out the details. Like I said, five and six, I guess, are kind of close. Do not write irrelevant things just to show that you can type stuff. This happens more often than you think. You just start typing and it turns out that half of what you wrote is totally irrelevant. Don't be, ar don't be afraid to erase it. Your argument should flow well. You're writing an English sentence or paragraph. Make sure that it flows. Keep in mind what the problem is that you're doing and that you're not doing something else entirely. And this is the big one. The state of mind that you're in when you invent the solution is different than the state of mind when you're writing the solution down for others to digest. The act of actually typing your solution, which is likely a new act to you, forces you to go back and forth between these two processes, inventing the solution and explaining the solution. <clears throat> it ultimately makes both of them better. If you cannot explain your solution, then your solution as a scientist and a mathematician, mathematician is worthless. You have to be able to explain it. So item number 10 in writing good math is the most important. Switching between invention and explanation is a skill that takes time to build. You'll get good at it, but you've got to do it. Okay, that's it for this video.